Yeah. Took you long enough. Here's your drink, Mr. Wicker Snack. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You don't have. You don't need to thank him. He's our butler. That's his job. What is this? Sorry, sir. Tell bartender Brick to get my drinks right. He's fired. Okay. Yes, sir. Apologies, sir. Champ, man. Uh, awesome. You taking your medicine today? Uh, I, yeah, but no, no more, no more talk like that. This is, this is a party. You should enjoy yourself. Okay, go sit back down. No more worries. All right, all right. What happened? Oh no! I know what happened here. This was no accident. This was murder. Preston Periwinkle and I are gonna get to the bottom of this. How can you be so sure it was murder? Well, you see. Mr. Wickerstacker, last night, called my private office asking me to come and be at this party today because he had a gut feeling that he would be murdered. No. Wait, 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 wait. How, 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 do, you, how, do, you, how do you gonna solve all this, the guy? How, how's this gonna work out? How's it work my fault? Well, you see, Mr. Periwinkle and I are world-class detectives. We solve famous art thieves other more famous murders and I'm also a part-time NFL referee on the side the best there ever was and all my decisions are final I bet it was Hugo she probably won the inheritance what? how dare you accuse me of murdering my husband he's the love of my life I bet it was Dr. Polsky <gasps> he made this medicine I bet you laced it you filthy animal how dare you accuse the good Dr. Bolsky of such an atrocity? I take my job as a physician very seriously, to the utmost team. He, he took a sip from the drink. It must have been the bartender. No, dude. You cannot disrespect my craft like that. I would never, ever do that to anyone. No way it's me. I'm offended. Settle yeah, down. Settle down. Settle down. What we're going to do is we're going to pull each one of you aside one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to do an interview. And from that interview, Mr. Perry Lincoln and I will be able to deduce who murdered Mr. Wickerstacker. It's ridiculous. I'm going to hold my kids. If this is so ridiculous, you wouldn't mind going first. Whatever. Biggie Woods, I'm going to need you to. I'm going to ask you a favor, and that's to watch the door and make sure nobody leaves the premises. All right, for sure, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, my G. Let's just get this over with already. That's the right attitude. Lester. That's Mr. Mohammed Lester to you. Calm down. I'm the one asking the questions here. I'm sorry. It's been a very stressful day. You can call me Mel. It's okay. Take a deep breath. So, Mr. Molester, what was your relation to Stamp Stramp Wickerstacker? I was his butler. And what would that job entail? A clean around the house. Uh, do dishes, deliver drinks, really whatever they need me to do. And how was Stramp as a boss? To be honest, horrible. He was a horrible boss and even a more horrible person. Is he that rude to all his employees? What about Dr. Bulski and Bartender Brick? How does he behave around them? Mr. Wicker Zacher had a weird relationship with Dr. Bulski. Some days they'd be best of buds, and other days they'd be screaming at each other. And what about Bartender Brick? Oh. You know, Bartender Brick got the worst of it. Sometimes when Mr. Wickerstacker would drink too much water, he'd lash out violently against him. So he was abusive towards Bartender Brick. Do you think this is the reason he would kill Dr. Wickerstacker? I'm not sure. Brick always seemed like a good guy. But lately he'd been down in the dumps. I figured he'd quit soon. If Shrimp was such a bad boss with his constant outbursts and physical abuse, why did people keep on working for him? Money. <laughs> Alright, and what were you supposed to be doing tonight?
to assist with the party. Just doing my job, delivering drinks to the guests from the bar, clearing out dishes, and doing the dishes. Did you see any jits doing any sussy behavior tonight? I would when I would deliver drinks, but not back in the kitchen with the dishes. Although at some point when I was looking over, I did see Brick talking to Biggie Woods and, H and Huga at the counter on two separate occasions. Thank you for your time. You comfortable there, bartender Brick? No. Great, because I really don't care. What were you doing tonight, bartender? Making drinks. It's my job. So you had access to all the drinks. That's pretty convenient for a murderer. That right there is an elven sized load of bull crap. I didn't do nothing. So it just so happens he was poisoned from a drink you made? Hey man, you don't know that. Dr. Bulski, he was the one managing his medicines, man. Like, why isn't he the one here right now? That is perfect. That is do you remember what drink you made Mr. Wickerstacker tonight? I made him a sweet tea with a lemon. And I gave it to Lester to give to him. Now I've heard from some sources that Mr. Wickerstacker was quite abusive to you. Mo Lester, he told you that? Man, I hate Mo Lester, that old rat. I cannot disclose my source. I know him. Lester, he was the only one in here before I was. Okay, so it might have been Lester. But did any of Mr. Wickerstacker's abuse drive you to murder? Mr. Detective, sir, I want you to look me right in the eyes, buddy. Of course not. That old stupid mustache, you. Then why would you continue working for him? Money. He paid me handsomely. I mean, he didn't pay me quite like he paid some others, but I mean, you know, he still paid me. What do you mean? Well, man, Mr. Wickershacker, he was paying for the school and the Mo Lesser's kids. Well, I mean, he used to, at least. What do you mean? Well, you see here, one night, he had way too much uh, water to drink. And he was telling everybody off. He was telling Dr. Bulski to lower his prices. He was telling Lester he can't afford his kids' schoolings. He was yelling about some other basketball team. He was just going off. So you think he'd kill Mr. Wickerstacker over that? Detective? I don't know. See here, Molesta, he loves kids. Well, his kids at least. My sources also informed me that you had some visitors at the bar tonight. Yeah, Big E and Hugo. And what did they talk to you about? Well, Big E, he wanted a drink. Hugo, she just wanted to talk. And what did Hugo want to talk to you about? Well, this violates the bartender's code, but uh, Hugo, I mean, he, she, she was upset now. I mean, she said that she overheard some yelling from the office. Um, two men's voices yelling. Uh, she said Mr. Wickerstacker was really upset about something. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for keeping everything civil upstairs while we did these interviews down here. Yeah, man, no problem. So, Mr. Woods, what's your relation to Mr. Wickerstacker? You serious? Answer the question. Okay, uh, Mr. Stramp is the owner of the basketball team I play for. And what team is that? The Celtics. And what were you doing that night? Mr. Stramp invited me over for a small get-together. We get along pretty well. Did you leave the room at all? Yeah, I got a drink for the bar. That Mo Lester guy was taking forever, so I just wanted to go get it myself from Bartender Brick. And what did you get? Just a sweet tea. I gotta stay healthy for the team, you know? Do you have any idea who would want to do something like this to him? Who else left the room that night? Two. I'm not really sure. I, everyone left at some point. I, I think I heard yelling outside a couple times. Do you know when the yelling was? I don't remember. Okay, leave now. Detective Jimbo, I want to help out in any way I can. Good, because you have no choice. 
What were you doing at the party here tonight? Oh, Mr. Wickersnapper Stramp invited me. I'm his personal doctor, but we have a good relationship. So what does being his personal doctor entail? I look after him, make sure he's good and healthy, you know, check his vitals. I also give him his meds. What meds have you been giving him? I can't disclose that information. That's convenient. We know you got in a fight with Mr. Wickerstacker tonight. What were you arguing about? I don't remember. He wanted me to look at some form or something, and then things escalated. Listen, I didn't kill him, I swear. Besides, the, the, the way his mouth foamed, it was definitely ingested poison. It, not injected into the bloodstream. And where did you get your doctorate from? Duke University. So how are we supposed to believe anything you say because you went to Duke University? He's right. I remember seeing that on the episode of Grey's Anatomy on TV when I used to manage Chipotle. I managed Chipotle in Seattle. <laughs> You're lucky Preston here managed Chipotle, or else you'd be in a lot of trouble. If it were me, I would talk to Hugo. I was talking to Stramp about his will, and he recently decided to make Hugo the sole beneficiary. If anyone would benefit from Stramp's death, it's her. Seems like a gold digger to me. Thank you for your cooperation, Dr. Wolski. We have it under control. How are you holding up, Miss Wickerstacker? What do you mean? My husband was killed. Are you sure you're upset? What? You are the sole beneficiary of the will. You were set to inherit a lot of money. Two. How long have you and Stramp been married? About two years. That seems like a long enough time to not be that suspicious. How did you two meet? At a Celtics game. I was with a friend in his suite. Why were you hanging around the bar tonight? What did you tell bartender Brick? I heard Shramp yelling from his office a lot. I was worried. And do you know who was yelling? The first time it was Dr. Bulski. The second time it was Vicky Woods. And then he argued with Dr. Bulski one more time. He argued with Biggie Woods too? Do you know what that argument was about? I don't... I don't usually ask Stramp about his personal business. Can you let me into Stramp's office so I can figure... conclude this investigation? Sure. Follow me upstairs. Everyone, gather out. Do you know who did it? We do. Who did it? <laughs> well, at first, Hugo seems like the obvious answer. She had the most to gain from Mr. Wickerstacker's death. But it isn't that simple. All of you had your own motive for killing Mr. Wickerstacker. But after listening to all your stories, I have found our killer. At first, I believe it to be Brick or Mo Lester. They both had direct access to Mr. Wickerstacker's drink. But there was a key evidence nobody else detected. Mr. Wickerstacker did not drink from his own cup. He mistakenly drank from another cup he placed near his own. <gasps> this eliminates both as suspects. Next was Hugo. She was a, an obvious beneficiary as she would receive Mr. Wickerstacker's money. But she knew that Mr. Wickerstacker was running low on funds. Mr. Wickerstacker announced that he was running low on money after drinking too much water. Because of this, he got into a fight with Dr. Bulski. Everyone believes it was due to Dr. Bulski's prices, but upon searching in Mr. Wickerstacker's office, I found this. What is that? This letter is a letter to the National Pharmaceutical Board that is requesting that Dr. Bulski's pharmaceutical license be removed and that he can no longer prescribe drugs. You see, Mr. Wickerstacker was running low on funds and could no longer afford the high cost illegal drugs that Dr. Bulski was providing him with. So he threatened Dr. Bulski with 
the removal of his license, and in return, uh, he was hoping that Dr. Bulski would be providing him with illegal drugs at a reduced cost. This, in my mind, is what the first argument we heard this evening was about. <gasps> That's preposterous! It, it wasn't me! Until I found this lab report. Originally, I had thought that lab report belonged to Mr. Wickerstackers and displayed his urine results. Until I found this corroborating piece of evidence that proves that it was Biggie Woods. <laughs> Freak yeah! This paperwork confirms the release of Biggie Woods, the star player of the uh, Mr. Wickerstacker's Boston Celtics. Mr. Wickerstacker found out that Biggie Woods was taking PEDs, which he confirmed with Dr. Bulski. This explains all of the arguments today. After Mr. Wickerstacker confronted Biggie Woods, he threatened to report Biggie and get him suspended from the league permanently. Upon hearing this, Biggie stormed out, then Biggie Woods made his move. Dr. Bulski was talking to Mr. Wickerstacker, Brick was talking to Hugo, and Lester, was ta Lester saw Hugo and Brick talking from the kitchen. Their stories all line up. Everyone was accounted for, so Biggie went into Mr. Wickerstacker's room, stole Mr. Wickerstacker's supply of illegal prescriptions. Uh, when he got his own drink, he placed the crushed up medicine into the drink. Then Mr. Wickerstacker was looking the other way. He switched out Mr. Wickerstacker's drink for his own. Nah, that's unrealistic. There ain't no way. Except for the fact that Mr. Wickerstacker could tell the difference. Because the sweet tea he drank was missing a lemon. This lemon magically appeared in your drink, Mr. Biggie Woods, which was actually his drink. Everything lines up. How could you? Ow, something just poked me. I had to. I'm too old and I'm getting washed. Call me Coach K. I needed something to keep me in the league. This league is my life. Mr. Wickerstacker was running out of money anyway. I was just doing what's best for the team. Hall grad. <laughs> <laughs> Preston Periwinkle, arrest this man. Have fun in the clink. Don't drop the soap. Detective Jimbo, thank you so much for your hard work. No problem, honey. Here's my number. Come on, man. That's too easy. Yes, sir.